we've got this circuit and we've got an ammeter connected in series within the circuit. And here's our example. If 5.0 times 10 to the power of 20 elementary charges, you know, that could be protons if we're talking about conventional current flow, but we all know in our hearts that they're really electrons. E stands for elementary charges, not electrons, but we know it's really electrons if we're talking about flowing electricity. If 5.0 times 10 to the power of 20 elementary charges pass a point in a circuit, in 2 minutes and 40 seconds. Now this is shorthand for 2 minutes and 40 seconds. 2.40. Not 2.40, not 2 o'clock and 40 minutes. 2 minutes and 40 seconds, okay? What is the current in the circuit? Now there's a couple of things that we need to sort of sort out here first. First of all, we know that current is equal to charge in coulombs divided by the amount of time that goes by. So we've been given a charge <coughs> based on a count of electrons. We didn't give the charge in coulombs, we gave our charge based on the number of electrons that have gone past. So what I want to point out is that if I want to know what the charge in coulombs is, I'm going to have to somehow use the, the uh, value 5.0 times 10 to the power of 20 electrons and use the idea of 6.24 times 10 to the power of 18 electrons per coulomb, which I gave you before to figure out how many coulombs are present when I have that many electrons. What do you think? How could I cancel out some units here, electrons <coughs> and coulombs, or elementary charges, sorry, in coulombs, to figure out how many coulombs are present when I have this many elementary charges? Yeah? Well, if you divide uh, 5.0 uh, times 10 by the number we know, uh, the number of electrons in a coulomb, technically, the top number is like E over 1. Mm -hmm. So, um, if you want to reverse it, yeah. yeah, this is really, this elementary charge is really elementary charge over 1. So if I have elementary charge over 1 divided by E over C, invert and multiply says E over 1 is equal to <coughs> C over E, oh, sorry, times C over E, cancel, cancel. Megan's absolutely right. That would give you units of Coulomb. So the, Coulomb, the units tell the story here. The units tell the story. So I can actually say, all right, 5.0 times 10 to the power of 20 elementary charges divided by 6.24 times 10 to the power of 18 elementary charges per coulomb would actually give me the Q value. So I can I ask you to do that calculation? You don't have to do it in your head, you can use a calculator. And the units can even be our rationale for why this works. You should get 80 point something. What do you get? Zoom in on the area. There you go. Boom, zoomed in. I picked up the paper. Can you see it better now? Yeah. Okay. <laughs> That's technological. So is it like 5.0 or whatever divided by us? Yeah. Zo can I zoom out now? Yeah. <laughs> Zooming out. I like that. This is a new zoom feature on the camera. All right, what do you get for the Q value? 30? 80 point? 80 point, is it 80.13? Yeah, all right. 80.13 coulombs, that's how much charge is going past. What else do I need to figure out if I'm gonna calculate the current? I got the Q, yeah. Yeah, how can I get the 20, how can I get the time in seconds? Yeah. Five minutes, sorry, it was two minutes, sorry. Two minutes. Two minutes times 60 seconds per minute plus 40 seconds. And somebody who's already taken the time to do the math, what do you get? 160, bingo was his name on. 160 seconds. 
80.13 is the 50 times 10 to the power of 20. Oh, you know what you may have, the mistake that you may have made, and it's very common, is that when you put in the denominator, it must all be in brackets. Okay, well, maybe I'll, I'll, I'll come for a visit with you after, okay? Come for a visit with you after. Okay, so when you're finding the Q value, you always have to divide by 6.24 times 15. Yeah, you know what, let's finish this problem, and then I'll show you a nice little trick for a formula. It's not a trick, it's a logic. Okay, well, some logic is tricky. All right, so we've got our current calculation we're going to do. We've got current equals Q over delta T, and we found Q and delta T, so we're away to the races with 80.13 coulombs divided by 160 seconds, and we end up getting a current of, what did we get? 0 0.5008. Oh, oh, eight, one. Yeah. Oh, one. Oh, yeah. But it's also eight, one, two. Wait, uh, eight, one, two, five, actually. Coulombs per second. And what would be a nicer way to write it than coulombs per second? Amps. And look, look at the sig figs we started out with here. Two sig figs. We could argue maybe that this is three sig figs, although it's really forty seconds. So we really, in, in terms of seconds, we're only confident up to the, the uh, nearest maybe whole, whole second. So maybe it's three sig figs. Maybe it's two sig figs, depending on whether we're only accurate to 10 seconds or to the nearest one second. But let's say that it's two sig figs there, and this is two sig figs. We could round this off to 0 0.50 coulombs per second, or we could just say amps. Now. With regards to the idea of a trick for calculating this Q value that we talked about before, I'm going to write it in red so you can still see it amongst this mess. But if I want to find the, a, a little equation for this, what we've really done here with this Q value is we've said, hey, if I want to find Q, that's the same thing as saying the charge, sorry, my fault. If I want to find Q, that's the same thing as saying the number of charges, I'm going to write a little letter N, divided by 6.24 times 10 to the power of 18. And then the units work out to being coulombs every time. That's a nice equation for calculating the quantity, ch quantity of charge in coulombs if I know how many electrons or protons I have, or how many excess of electrons or protons I have. Yeah, I can zoom in on that. That's the zoom? That's an N. N. The number of elementary charges divided by 6.24 times 10 to the power of 18 coulombs. It's like 3D. OK, make you have vertigo if you're watching it on the internet. Anyway, I've got this Q value equation. I could say that Q is equal to, as, we, as you just wrote, you don't have to rewrite this again. I could say that Q is equal to N over 6.24 times 10 to the power of 18. And I could say that works out to being Coulombs. Or, you know what some people do, and I actually like this a little bit better, so maybe you will too, is instead of writing it this way, what a lot of people even do, is they'll say, ah, Q is equal to N times 1 over 6.24 times 10 to the power of 18. Coulombs, okay? Now we know that this 6.24 times 10 to the power of 18 is the number of, what is it, electrons per coulomb or coulombs per electron? Electrons. electrons per coulomb. So let's get rid of this just for a second. This is the number of electrons. This here is the number of coulombs per the number of electrons, right? Coulombs per electron? Oh, other way around, my fault. Electrons per coulomb, electrons per coulomb. Is that right? Yes. So that when I multiply by the, the thing on the denominator, the, the denominator's units flip and it becomes coulombs per electron. Can I ask you to, to do me a favor? Calculate one divided by 6.24 times 10 to the power of 18. Just calculate it out as a number, okay? One divided by 6.24 times 10 to the power of 18. What is it? 
1.6 times 10 to the power of negative 19. Negative 19, I like it. And now if I divide by electrons over Coulomb, the units flip. So that's 1.6 times 10 to the power of negative 19 Coulombs per elementary charge. Now if I know the number of elementary charges, and the reason people really like this is because now we know how many coulombs, and it's a fraction, a very small fraction. One electron is that fraction of a coulomb. And if a fra you can multiply what fraction an electron is of a coulomb by the, number of coulomb by the number of electrons, and that'll tell you how many coulombs of a charge you have. So this is a really nice keep the scientific notation in the numerator type of formula. And so people write it like this. They'll say, Q is equal to N times E, the charge of one, one uh, electron in coulombs, where E is equal to 1.6 times 10 to the power of negative 19 coulombs per elementary charge. Okay? So the charge of one electron would be negative of that. The charge of one po proton would be positive of that. So we say E negative is equal to, and E positive is equal to, 1.6 times 10 to the power of negative 19 coulombs per elementary charge. And if you look on your formula sheet that I gave you at the beginning of the year, I'd be willing to bet that you would find that magic number somewhere. Okay.